Honourable Member for Portage Lisker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I do appreciate the opportunity to uh, rise and to speak on Bill C-71. I do want to note that I will be sharing my time with the member from Medicine Hat, Karsten Warner. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm going to be very clear. I, we will not be, and I will not be supporting Bill C-71, and I'm going to tell you why. Three basic reasons, although there's a whole list. I could probably give you the top ten, but there probably are even more reasons than that. First of all, Mr. Speaker, the Liberals cannot be trusted when it comes to firearms legislation that does anything to get, the, get firearms out of the hands of criminals, while at the same time protecting and respecting law-abiding Canadians. They cannot be trusted. Now, there's a very uh, good saying, and it's not just a saying, but I think it's something we've all seen true. The best predictor of future behaviour is past behavior. So what have we seen come out of the Liberals when it comes to gun legislation? Well, we all know, and you know very well as well, Mr. Speaker, the wasteful and ineffective long gun registry that was introduced by the, by the, uh, by the Liberals, defended, supported, uh, cost $3 billion, penalized and made criminals out of law-abiding Canadians. The very, that was the very first thing that Liberals did when they had a chance to do something to combat crime. So now they're, they're back at it. Uh, they, they told Canadians that they were going to do something on, uh, on firearms legislation. They said that they were going to introduce a bill. They were having a lot of trouble right now around their disastrous India trip. They're having a lot of trouble because they're breaking promises. The Prime Minister is failing Canadians with his eth ethical lapses, so they got a brainwave. Let's go after law-abiding gun owners again. That'll work. So you look at this piece of legislation, and as I said to begin with, they can't be trusted. Gun owners know, and Canadians know, that the Liberals uh, are, are going after them in, instead of going after the people who are actually committing crimes. Now, I do recall vividly back in 2009, I was a new member of Parliament and I introduced a private member's bill, Bill C-391, which would end the wasteful and ineffective long gun registry. And there were a whole lot of Liberal MPs who had told their constituents that they would vote to end the long gun registry. And the first chance they got to fulfill their word, well, they did what Liberals do. They broke their promise, and the, they broke their promise, uh, which would result in penalizing law-abiding Canadians. So, I just want to remind you, Mr. Speaker, of some of the members who broke their word and are here in the House of Commons in this Parliament, and they will have to answer to their constituents. For example, the member from Yukon wow. broke his word to protect law-abiding Canadians. Shameful. He supports the long gun registry. The next one on the list, I won't name, Mr. Speaker. The third one I was going to mention <laughs> is the Member of Parliament from the coast of Bays, Central Notre Dame. He as well had an opportunity to support law-abiding Canadians, but what did he do? He's, he supports the Long Gun Registry. Wow. The Member from Malpec, a member who had promised his constituents he would vote to end the Long Gun Registry, what did he do? Supported the Long Gun Registry. The Minister of Public Safety himself when he was uh, in the, in the part of the opposition, had a chance to end the long gun registry, he voted for it and supported it. Now, you're, you might ask me, why, why are you bringing this up now? Well, as I said, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, the Liberals can't be trusted because they want to target law-abiding Canadians because it's easy. Right it's actually here. very easy to target people who are already obeying the law. People who get a, a, a license, for example, have a license to own a firearm, or uh, store owners who already keep records, what an easy target for these Liberals. So easy to go after people who are already following best practices, already obeying the law, and in the whole guise of, we're going to do something to combat gun crime. So first and foremost, I have to say, I don't trust the Liberals. I don't trust them on ethics. I don't trust them on balancing the budget. I don't trust them on keeping their word, and I don't trust them when it comes to any kind of gun legislation that will do anything to penalize criminals. Because let's remember, the Liberals actually like to protect and reward criminals. It's quite interesting how we've got returning terrorists coming who have been fighting with ISIS. They're getting protected.
Give They're them a getting told, no, we, we believe in you. We think that you can be rehabilitated. So, you know what? There's no legislation coming for you, ISIS terrorists, returning to Canada. No, you're going to get a nice little group, group hug, and, 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 and we'll probably give you more money. Big, big, but big, gun big. owners, stores who are selling firearms, Canadian Tire, we're coming after you. People who have um, actually fought against our allies, like Omar Qadar, he gets a big payout. Boy, the Liberals have no problem just, just laying the down and giving lie. everything that Omar wanted, he got. Gun owners, nope, we're not standing up for you. It's a whole lot of talk, and the only group of people that actually get protection with this Liberal government are criminals. So, no, I don't trust them. Now, I want to talk about the actual substance of C-71, which is the same old, same old, um, where there's actually nothing here that will protect uh, and do anything to fight crime. Let, let's talk about um, this part of the legislation that's going to ask store owners to keep records. They already are keeping records. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, this really begs the question, this is like a uh, a, a problem, a, a solution in search of a problem. There are not crimes being committed by people who, have, who are legally purchasing firearms. I'm going to tell you actually the statistics on that. An analysis of Special Request to Stats Canada found that between 1997 and 2012, just 7% of the accused in firearms homicide had a valid firearms license, or 2% of all accused murderers. If you have a license in this country to own a firearm, you are 50% less likely to ever commit a crime with a firearm. So it's not like we have some big outbreak of people are going and buying a firearm at Canadian Tire and then using that firearm in the commission of a crime and then Canadian Tire is saying to the police, no, we're not going to give you that information. That's not happening, Mr. Speaker. That, that is not a problem that needs to be fixed. Now, I will tell you what is happening. And I'm going to quote John Toyer, the mayor, I'm going, to, I'm going to reference him, the mayor of the city of Toronto. He noted that only 2% of gun homicide victims in Toronto had no connection to either gangs or drugs. 98% of the crime that's going on has to do with gangs and, wow, and drugs. So, Mr. Terrible. Speaker, that is where the problem is, and that's what needs to be addressed. And, of course, as I mentioned in my, uh, my question earlier on, this bill does not even mention the word gangs or organized crime. Now, it does mention a word the Liberals love, registry and, and reference number. That's their new one. 26 times. So let's be clear, as per the normal liberal way of doing things, this is getting ready to create another backdoor, reg a backdoor registry, which will then very easily turn into the regular, wasteful and ineffective type of registry that the liberals like to promote. So, Mr. Speaker, um, you know, there are so many things, and I know some of my colleagues mentioned some of the areas where people are, gangs are getting guns. Let's talk about this really seriously. We need to get tough on, on gangs and on violent crime. Now, when we were in government, there were a lot of things that we did. We had the Tackling Violent Crime Act. It provided mandatory prison sentences for serious firearms offenses, stricter bail provisions for those accused of serious offenses involving firearms. Again, tackling the problem, not going after law-abiding gun owners and store owners. We passed the Act to amend the Criminal Code regarding our organized crime and the protection of justice system participants, which provides police officers and officials with important tools to help them fight organized crime. Mr. Speaker, Conservatives are the party of law and order. We believe that criminals and people who use guns in the commission of crimes should know that the penalty will be swift Absolutely. and it will be just. Mr. Speaker, we do not believe in attacking law-abiding Canadians who are using firearms for legitimate purposes, nor the store owners who are legally and in a principled way uh, uh, selling those firearms. You know, Mr. Speaker, what the Liberals have done, and I'm going to wrap up with this, they have tried to, because of all of their failures and the problems they've encountered over the last sp number of months, they're trying to import a problem that's occurring in the U.S., the U.S. gun control situation is completely different than Canadians' gun legislation, but they're trying to bring that here and somehow say that they're fixing a problem that's actually existing in the U.S. It's, again, window dressing. It's disingenuous. It's typical liberal, uh, I, I'm saying one thing and doing something completely differently. It's bad legis legislation, and it should be revoked. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Whitby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my Honourable Colleague for her statement. Um, before I begin, I do want to uh, tell the House of a, a family of a mom and two teens, the Pechtonovsky family of Ajax, who were murdered on Wednesday, March 14th in Ajax in a situation of domestic violence. And last November, I want to remind all members that last November, the Minister of Public Safety uh, introduced $327 million to combat guns and gangs. He held a summit in, in March prioritizing the violence of guns and gangs. So I'm wondering what the member opposite will tell uh, constituents in Ajax, or maybe constituents of our own, what is so wrong with enhanced background checks for anyone who wants to purchase? What is wrong with confirming that the license is valid? And what is wrong with having vendors confirm and keep records, keeping in mind that this is not a registry, and keeping in mind that one death from a gun violence is one death too many? The Honourable Member for Portage. Well, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the question, and I've been, as you know, I've been working on this file for many years, and I'm a, I'm a big supporter of background checks, and I think that anybody who threatens their spouse or has been involved in domestic violence absolutely should not be owning a firearm. Mr. Speaker, but the fact is the Long Gun Registry did nothing to combat gun uh, violence or domestic violence. In fact, the majority of women who were murdered were murdered with knives not with firearms. So let's talk about domestic violence in an authentic way. Let's deal with it, which is, has to do with family issues, Mr. Speaker. It has to do with a lot of things that don't have to do with, with the actual thing, the weapon that is used in domestic violence. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you, I had a very good friend back in 2000, early 2009 who was murdered by a gangster she was pregnant, she was almost ready to deliver her baby, and she was murdered by a gangster with a gun. So this is very real to me. And I'm going to tell you, nothing in this legislation, nothing in the long gun registry, nothing that the Liberals have in introduced has addressed that. Because again, they want to coddle the criminal instead of dealing with it. And sometimes it's tough to deal with. It's tough to deal with a returning terrorist. But you have to address the problem and not send a red herring somewhere else to, to distract. And this would do, will do nothing to combat domestic violence. That's just a fact. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for uh, Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague for a great speech and for the work that she's done on uh, this issue. Uh, certainly her and Gary Breitkreitz over the years and others' names come to mind. But uh, I came into politics to get rid of Bill C-68 and the Long Gun Registry. And uh, certainly the day that I did it, or that we did it as a government, uh, you know, my constituents were thrilled. We were frustrated with the cost of it. We were frustrated that it didn't attack or, or concentrate on crime. It concentrated on legally owned gun firearms by farmers. My concern, one of my concerns, and I, there's reasonable people in all parties, and I, I would plead, put out my plea to them. That in my rural riding, we have gun shows uh, going on on weekends, Saturdays, Sundays, uh, throughout the riding. These gun shows are collectors who are there at a booth and then sell their firearms. People come from all across Canada to these gun shows. Concert, Hannah, Camrose, other places, many other, Pacaster, many other places in my riding. The frustration that they're seeing with this is in regards to the, the registration number. Um, every per firearm that is sold, you have to look at their, their license to purchase that firearm. But the idea that they're going to have to get a hold of Miramichi or get a hold of a gun uh, uh, group somewhere to verify that license on a Saturday and Sunday, they know that it will shut down these gun shows. And uh, if my colleague would respond to that, uh, I would like to hear her answer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Portage Lister, and well, 40 seconds or less, thank please. Thank you. My, my, in my writing, we have numerous gun shows, too, that are put on by incredibly responsible and respected people, and the, the, the firearms that are, um, that are looked at and purchased are not firearms that are being used in a crime. And I, I would suggest that uh, licenses, are, licenses are already being checked because... I mean, in rural Canada, people are responsible. They, they would never want to sell a firearm to somebody who wouldn't legally be able to own that firearm. 
It's the bureaucracy. We're going back to bureaucracy, Mr. Speaker. We're going back to seeing law-abiding Canadians being bogged down in bureaucracy. And again, the problem is there's nothing, nothing is happening that will combat real gun crime in Canada.